They didn't have women's weightlifting in Cuba until 2007 officially. And yet they had women's weightlifting in China probably in the late 70s, certainly the early 80s, United States, early 80s, Hungary, Britain, etc., etc., Bulgaria. Uh, women's weightlifting has been around for 40 years. Um, but it didn't get into the Olympics until 2000. It's hard to say percentage-wise which has the bigger audience, which has the more media appeal and so on, but to me, women's weightlifting is every bit as good as men's weightlifting, and men's weightlifting is every bit as good as women's weightlifting. There's, there's, they're not two separate things. Yes, I competed in the 2000 Olympics. You know, it doesn't seem real. I'm tapped into reality. I, I get that that's um, a real threat. It, it's, it's sad. Like, and I, I'm so hopeful because I love the sport so much, and um, it, it may be uh, wishful thinking, but I'm, I'm gonna stay there until. I see that it's not gonna be in the Olympics. And the fact that women just got in. Yes. Like our run will have been so short relative to the men. Given that boxing has done weightlifting a favor by taking the bad, the negative news focus, soaking it all up, then that's helped. But you shouldn't really, really rely on others to do your work. And the IWF has done its own work. And I think, I think it will be okay for that way. I could be wrong. I mean, it's definitely the most competitive quad that I've ever been in because there's one so many girls that are in the top 10 and then the numbers that everyone's doing are so much higher than they have been in the past. The fact that I know I have to put at least 10 kilos on my total to even have a shot is very intimidating. It's not something that's like out of the question or like out of reach by any means, but like having to improve that much this late into my career is something that like most of the time you don't really have to see. You don't see people have to make such large jumps 10 years into their lifting career. Like it just doesn't happen. So it's it's a little scary, but it's also, I think it, it's making me better. Like it's making me not able to just settle and just go try and do like the numbers that I'm comfortable with. Like every time we open, we have to open higher. And every third attempt is gonna be something I've probably never touched before. And that part is terrifying, but it's gonna force me to do numbers that I normally probably wouldn't even consider. Travel weighs very heavy on me. It's a subject I always have a lot of trouble with when we're leading up to a competition. I have a lot of anxiety about, not necessarily like, the actual flight or anything, but just travel in general, I have anxiety about, especially when you're cutting and like you can't eat a whole lot and you have like a long travel day and like you don't have a lot of options. Like that gives me a lot of anxiety, not knowing what the situation is gonna be like abroad, being away from home for a really long time. I'm a homebody, like I'm very extroverted and outgoing and I love traveling, but like if I'm away from my dogs and Sam for a long time, like, it just weighs heavy on me, so I really try to stay wherever we're going for as little time as possible. Like, I want to be there enough to acclimate and feel good about, like, time difference and sleeping and all that good stuff. But, um, yeah, just sitting there for, like, two weeks, I, I can't do that. I cannot. It's not good for me. By the time the competition rolls around, I'm so ready to go home. That's all I'm thinking about. So I really try to balance between making sure I'm prepared and not hindering my performance by not getting there soon enough to acclimate, while also realizing that mentally it's really hard for me to be away from home so much. I 
I mean, quite frankly, it's not super popular right now. But I mean, I've always dreamed of being a mom, just having a couple kids and living on some land. And I do want a simple life in terms of, I don't mind like the middle-class white picket fence dream. Like that's totally cool with me. And maybe that is a product of me going to the Olympics at the age of what, like 22? Like I feel like I probably have done my big thing in my life. So now I'm ready just to hang out, kinda. I still have goals for myself, don't get me wrong. But um, mostly I just want a small little family and raise some family in Georgia, I guess. So yeah, I'm excited for that. That's what I mean when I say like, I can't have all of this for a long time. Like eventually I'm gonna wanna have kids and retire from weightlifting. I feel like I'm kind of just in my like, you know, glory days right now and trying to enjoy it while I can. Cause I feel it coming to an end, like willingly, just like I'm feeling like this is probably my last run. My experience, I just have to beat someone, which is a little bit, you know, it has its own unique like pros and cons, right? It's like you never really know until you get to the end, really for both both ways. Like she, both of us, we need to know, did we do enough? And then was our enough like more than the other person? It's a stress that it probably is not helpful to think about all the time. <laughs> just focusing on that one competition that's ahead of you and then you go into the next with the same thought process rather than thinking, oh my gosh, in a year I have to be doing this. Okay, bye. I give you treats. He knows where it's at. That's what he was looking for. He was looking for the treats. Yeah, and then they always, they both sit and look at me like this at random points of the day, like, where's my treat? <laughs> How am I supposed to say no? It's kind of crazy, but there's not a scenario in my mind that I'm not at Paris that I don't go. I think that's a way of me protecting myself, to be honest. That, that fear of like not going to the Olympics and not having that second chance and being able to rewrite this story in a way that I want it to end is terrifying. I think the US girls are super talented and so I have to push even harder than I did last time. And last time I felt like I had to push really hard. Biggest fear is that the ending doesn't go the way that I hope it does. That I need it to, to be honest. <laughs> Physically, I feel pretty good. I've PR'd a lot of training lifts and ones that I didn't know if I ever would again. So I'm trying to lean on those to feel confident, but I am having a hard time. So I'm trying to lean on the people that I have in my life that remind me of the things that I'm doing. Let me tell you a story <laughs> that starts two Fridays ago. Two Fridays ago, uh, you snatch 123. Two Mondays ago, you go, oh, PR hang snatch 116. Then the next day you came in, you did a PR hang clean with 156 and jerk and then you jerked 180 that day and then also um you the next day you snatched 110 for a double then on friday of last week you did 158 for a clean and jerk single wait so was it only 57 PR, oh wait also wait a second oh, hold on seven. wait a second i forgot something your pr triple squat so you've pr'd your hang snatch your hang clean your squat you've pr'd your training, clean and, clean and jerk, you've PR'd your snatch, and you've PR'd your squat. So, hmm, hmm I can't think of any other exercises. <laughs> I don't remember any other exercises. The light bulb that I have going on, you know, you turn the light on, it's like kind of like. And it's like, <laughs> and then you're like, that one's broken. Yeah. <laughs> when I start to kind of 
fall apart, which I do. I fall apart really hard before meet sometimes mentally. So I wish we could avoid that part, but that with just like normal life stuff and hormones, like things like that, it's just, it's not been great the last couple of days, the last week or so, but I feel a little better today. And I'm trying to be better at that. I'm not good at it. I'm not, I'm not succeeding very well on getting better at that. But I know if I do, I think I could be pretty dang good. But it's just hard. If it was like, if I could have a brain, like a really strong, tough brain, I feel like I probably would be like so, so good at weightlifting. But I'm like still good at weightlifting, but I feel like I could be better if I was a little bit more tough mentally. But we're trying, we're getting there. But under the pressure of a competitive quad, time is of the essence. In less than three months after Argentina, it's time again to compete. Cuba's got such a cool weightlifting history. The meet was put there because the 1973 World Championships were held in Cuba. So this was the 50 year anniversary of them hosting the Weightlifting World Championships of 1973. It's just um, a celebration of Cuban lifting. So they have such a history that you know goes back to you know, their relationship with the Soviet Union and trade it, like having coaches work together. So uh, as a weightlifting historian or, or fan of weightlifting history, is a really neat place. Though Cuba was a fun place, this competition was not without consequence. What it's all about right here. What is this that? Is our, this is our Bible here. That's just the oh, that Olympic qualification good. ranking list. It wasn't that it's what we live and die by, especially at these Grand Prix. We're watching the numbers here plus any competitors that are on the list. It's more important here when an athlete has the ability to move up the rankings versus a medal. This is what we're going for, this is what we talked to the coaches about. We're trying to get folks to the Olympics. We could have looked like absolute fools. Like we could have looked completely foolish. We knew we were making the right choice. We knew it. Like I knew it on paper, I knew it physiologically, I knew with her brain and like her body, like it was the, it was the only choice. But you still like, it's still a risk, you know? It's a calculated one. It's one that was right. It's one of the few times we'll get to make that choice. I, and right now we look like we made the right one. And both of us knew that. And so like, that's why the sport is so freaking cool. Is like, you just, you're, you can never be settled. You can never, it's never over. It's never like, it's never final until it, like the very end. Like uh, the sport just, it makes you make choices and live by them and then hope, and then just hope in the end. Like everything from exercise selection to do we cut weight. It's like, you gotta live by them and then hope you made the right one. And sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. Um, okay, so we're doing something a little different. Um, I am not cutting, so I'm competing in the 55A session. We're like in the middle of a really long cycle leading up to Worlds. So definitely not in comp prep shape, but I feel really strong. Um, so we want to open up a little bit higher than I've done in the past, kind of get that confidence for Worlds, and then potentially just scratch my second and third attempts. Um, never done that before. Um, but yeah, I think it'll, I think it'll be fun and also a good confidence boost for my prep for Worlds. Very weird to know that like Haley's lifting tonight and she's probably gonna full send it and there's nothing I can do about it. I've chosen to essentially like let this opportunity go by. That's a good lift at 107. Haley's best is 111. Here we see her second attempt, 110. That's going to be a no lift at 110. And then her third attempt, 111, and a no lift for her on that. A frustrating day for Haley Reichardt as she trails a kilo behind Jordan Delacruz in the Oki Bar. I feel like I'm in shape to do really heavy openers, but I don't want to push it. I don't want to, this kind of sounds bad, but like, accidentally do a really good total and then be in the wrong weight class. Looking at it from a larger perspective, you know, we have so many more competitions coming up where we have to full send it, right? Like Worlds is a big one. The Grand Prix and Pan Ams in 24 will obviously be really big ones. So we want to be in really good shape for that and not push too much at the beginning 
and then we're just running on low steam towards the end. Monday, I did my first snatch off the floor without straps, and it was very weird. And that was crazy, because what she wasn't supposed to. And we both realized it Monday. We were like, oh, shoot. Like, she hadn't done a lift without straps since before Pan Am's. And so I was like, I looked at the program, and it, it was a complex that was like a pool plus a floating. And I was like, hey, so you're going to work up, do these doubles up to 77? I was like, and then I need you to put the bar on the floor, take the straps away, go back to 75, and like build up to 85. And so like, she's done all these doubles, all this work, back to the floor, hasn't sat from the floor at all. We're starting at 75 and then up to 85. I think because there's less pressure in general being in the 55 class, uh, it doesn't make me as nervous. Jordan Delacruz at the Grand Prix here in Cuba. Jordan Delacruz opening up at 85 kilos. And that's going to be a good lift for Delacruz at 85. She's going to wave her second and third attempts. Here we see Jordan opening up at 110. This will bring home the gold medal in the total. And that's a good lift. Nice 195 total for Jordan Delacruz. And Jordan won't be the only one competing outside of her weight class. It really does kind of suck that I have to sit and watch Olivia and Meredith compete, and I have nothing to answer to that. I just have to watch it happen. No matter if I was competing or not, Olivia and Meredith are going to do what they're going to do. Um, and I was always planning on Worlds being my big event anyway. So trying to keep all the stress levels low, because really there's not a lot of reason to stress right now. I'm mid-cycle focused on worlds. It feels like those three are just playing. You ever seen that like at baseball games, you're watching the game and the ball goes into the cup and then you have to you have to track the cup and figure out which one. It's like, it feels like those three are just like all the time, right? And so as it sits right now, Kate is at the top, Olivia's in the middle and Meredith's at the bottom. Like I expect that to change. Every competition in that order will shift in some way. Cause they're, you're talking about three of the best competitors in the world, like all competing for one spot, hopefully one spot one shot, really. As it sits right now, because of, and that's what's so crazy, is like, Kate didn't choose 76. Like, she's competing as a 76, not by choice. She's the number one ranked 71 in the, in, the, in the country, but she didn't get the option to compete as 71 here because of how much shifting there is. Like, Meredith beat her at the Arnold, and so she doesn't get to go to this competition as a 71, but she does get to go to Worlds as a 71, and Meredith doesn't. Tomorrow's really about what I can do, the total that I need or I want, and less about um, who I'm competing against. I don't think there's gonna be a whole lot of strategy or anything to that effect. It's simply, I need this number, I need this weight on the bar, and I will warm up to that, and that's what I want to happen. It's less like, there's no medals, team points, scoring in any way. It's the numbers that I need to hit is really all it is. So whether that's against Kate or Meredith, I don't think it matters. And I don't think it matters to them either. Olivia Reeves opening up at 104 for her snatches. Olivia sitting behind Kate Vibert in the OQR in the 71 kilo class, trying to make up a little ground today. Sits in with it, comes up. That's a good opening attempt for Olivia Reeves at 104. That will bring out Meredith Allwine for her opening attempt at 105. Meredith also competing as a 71, trying to earn that spot and catch Kate and Olivia. Chase that, and that's a no lift for Meredith Allwine at 105. See so here, Meredith coming out for her second attempt at 107, taking a two kilo jump after that missed opening attempt. And that's a no lift for Allwine at 107. Meredith Allwine coming back for her third attempt. Repeating the lift at 107. Oh, and that's a no lift for Meredith Allwine. She fails to post a total today by missing all three of her snatches. A very rare occurrence for Meredith Allwine. That's gonna bring back Olivia Reeves at 108. Nice lift for Olivia Reeves at 108 kilos. Again, trying to catch K 
Kate Vibert, and that's going to be a no lift on her third attempt at 110. Olivia Reeves opening up 133 kilos. Very nice jerk. Olivia Reeves posts a total with that 133 kilo opening attempt. Second attempt for Reeves, that's going to be a no lift, and her third lift here at 141 to try and catch Kate, and that's not going to happen today. No lift at 141 kilos. Kate and I are very similar in the way that we approach training and the way that we approach life and what motivates us and what doesn't. If I tell Jordan, hey, you're not going to make that jerk, she'll believe me. If I tell Kate, she'll give me the middle finger and prove me wrong. Spencer and I had a little bit of a talk, like, I don't know, a month or so ago. I was getting really burnt out feeling like I just wasn't in a great mood. Like, I wasn't in a great place with weightlifting in general. I was starting to feel burnt out. I was starting to have not as much fun in the gym. I was trying to, like, figure out a way to, like, get back into that mode of like, I love this sport, I want to be here. What can we do to make that happen? I said, this is what I value in the gym. This is what I feel I get the most out of. Like, you're the boss. Like, I am not trying to coach myself. That is never my intention. But at the same time, I've been in the sport for eight years now and I can kind of see trends and what works for me. And you know, my mind, my mental state, when I go into the gym, that matters too. So if I'm not having fun, I know it's going to go downhill, so in my mind, I'm like, I need to tell Spencer that this is not fun and we need to figure things out. And I told him, I want to have more reps at higher percentages because, first of all, I enjoy that, and second of all, I need to build confidence there and work on my technique there. I know I can perform a perfect 65-kilo snatch, but when I'm in all this volume, I want to know I can still hit 100 kilos and make it pretty so when all the volume turns down, you know, 105 to 110 is going to be pretty, you know, and I won't feel so like a fish out of water at competition. Here we see Kate Vibert opening up at 107 kilos. Nice opener for Kate. Kate lifting is a 76 kilo athlete today, so not working on improving her total in the 71s. Here we go, second attempt, Kate Vibert, 110 on the bar. And that's going to be a good lift at 110. Kate's going to go up to 113. This would be an American record in the 76 kilo class. Kate opening up here at 136. Not come up with a 136 on her first attempt. Reset that bar. Second attempt, Kate Fiber at 136 kilos. This is it out front. No lift, Kate Fiber 136. Kate's going to bump up to 137 for her third attempt. See if she can make this. Kate always performs well under pressure. And that's a good lift for Kate at 137 to post a 247 total and place herself in the OQR rankings as an 81 kilo athlete. I don't like lifting for no reason. You know, like we had a reason today, it was to test out new openers. But that wasn't a good enough reason for me. And I think subconsciously that was my way of being like, screw this. And I think that is a character flaw of mine, but it's okay. I think that was a learning experience. And it was very me when it comes down to it. I wasn't really that nervous throughout all of it. I was just like, okay. And then when I realized I needed that last lift to win, to total, to do everything, I did what I needed to do. And that's kind of me in a nutshell. I have to be back in back into some kind of corner. And until I was, obviously, it didn't really happen. And then 37 felt easy, of course, because that's how I am. 
I'm frustrated, don't get me wrong. I would have loved to make 36 and then potentially do something that would make me the top 81 in the OQR in the US right now. And I really wanted to make that 113 snatch because I would have been an American record and I haven't had one of those in a while. But all in all, I'm pretty happy. Like I'm training through this when it comes down to it. And I did two kilos under my best, which really isn't a bad day. I said that Jordan was like a perfectly calculated cup of coffee, everything was perfect, and she was just, you know, and Kate's like a, like chugging or shotgunning a bang. There you got it, there's your shotgun and a bang. Chaos, always chaos. But as Maddie knows all too well, chaos isn't always preferred. Ready, Will? Wow. Three whites. At least my thumbnails match my shoes. Except I should have thought that through because my thumbnails are the ones that get covered. Are the rest of them just black? They're various. And in various, various stages of falling off. Weightlifting, everything can feel smooth, fast. Everything can feel perfect. Seemingly out of nowhere, things can start to deteriorate. The exposure of the lift begins to crumble. It's unbelievably hard to hold all the pieces together. Rogers opening attempt at 110 kilos just loses that behind so we reset the bar second attempt Matty Rogers at 110 She holds on to that one. That's a good lift for Maddie Rogers on her second attempt at 110. Maddie's going to scratch her third attempt. So we'll see her come back out for the jerks. I haven't done 10 from the floor since on stage. Just, it's, it's, there's, but but when, when you, you stay two over weeks, like that, like, for two weeks, I have said, you don't have to do it in order to do I know, it. But never in my career have I done Okay, that. but you know what? In your career, things were different than they are with me. Can you just say I was right? No. I was right. Good concept. Come on, let's 
Here's see Maddie Rogers coming out for her opening attempt at 138 kilos. Trying to improve her total in the OQR, trying to make a little progress up the ranking. And no question about that, Jerk. Good lift for Maddie Rogers in her opening attempt at 138. Lena Jerk, the opener was great, so we got a little green. Like, well, just go, let's try to get whatever total. Here we see Maddie coming out for her second attempt at 142. And that's going to be a no lift for Rogers at 142. Third attempt here, 143. lift for Maddie Rogers at 143. She'll be credited with a 248 total today. But does not improve her rankings in the OQR. We decided that we wanted to take the approach that the first order of business was to try and win the meet. Let's go out there and make a big total and be a part of this competition. It was good. I was glad how I did. I, my snatch just felt pretty good. So Mary opened more aggressively in the snatch. She opened at 115, which has been her average opener over the last couple of years. She went 115, 119 in the snatch. 119 was a competition PR. To me, 119 unlocked the door to some bigger numbers in the total later in the competition. So we took 119 and she did, those were easy, really great looking attempts. So we went for a PR at 122. I had been working through like a hand thing before the meet, so my training was pretty bad. Basically every Friday I'd go up to 150 and cut it. And so my hand was just like, anytime it would go back, it was just really, really painful. So I couldn't really hold my rack and I couldn't really jerk that well. So I was just like basically getting through that meet to take a break and needed like a week off to just let it rest. So that was kind of, I was like, let me go all in in Cuba, give it like a week off and it should be fine. During my warm ups, I was like thinking, Okay, your last clean and jerk, you just took 140. You gotta take 148 in the back, and then you got three clean and jerks on the platform and you can take a week off. Take my 148, and I'm like, okay. You got three clean and jerks and you can take a week off. And I'm like, that's kind of messed up that I was thinking like that, but it really, really, really hurt. Sarah Robles had a great snatch session. She took an attempt at 129, which is the American record, and was super close at that, so she was like on and had a big lead after the snatch. 
And so moving into the clean and jerk, we knew we had to try and make up deficit and see if we could pass Sarah. And so we took a pretty aggressive approach. The plan then was to open at 155 to be the last opener at the meet. Based on how Sarah clean and jerked, we could take 158. She made 150. So her first attempt was 155. We took a small jump to 158 to win the competition and get the gold medal overall. And then Mary took a jump to 164, which would have put her above Sarah in the OQR. As her coach, she made the lift. Um, but she got called on a press out. She got three reds from the judges. Uh, to me, I, you know, I still, if I watched that a million times, I thought that, you know, she drove the bar forward and then kind of worked her head through. And when you do that with your shoulders, it makes it look like your arm gets a little soft. And so it wasn't a good jerk by any means. Like for Mary, like Mary's jerk is good. It's it's like a rocket off her shoulders, and it wasn't. She her elbows got low, so there's some technical stuff that was that uh, she didn't do uh, in that, but it was a PR clean, so she worked hard for it. I think I'm doing a pretty good job. And without reprieve, these athletes seem to go from one competition to the next. This prep, I wouldn't say it's going perfectly but it's also not going poorly. My squats are the strongest they've ever been, so like I feel really, really strong. There has been some technical issues with my snatch. Feet, feet, feet. Patience. It's good patience right there. Good. That one, so that one didn't come to you. Like you had to go to it. So you, it was out front and you like saddled into it. But we're working through them and we still have time to get it all put together. So, I mean, it's been a lot of work. It's been a pretty long cycle. I'm really excited to get into the true competition prep and like work up on the intensity of the snatch and clean and jerk so that, you know, I can actually feel the lifts and feel a little bit more prepared than I am right now. Mentally, I'm just like ready for it to be here because I feel like it has been such a long time coming. So I'm ready to just go, do my thing, and hopefully it'll work out how we've always planned because I put a lot of hard work in. After Tokyo, I think my mindset was so fixated on medals and winning, PRing, like all of this stuff. And I see the bigger picture now, like it's not just worlds that I'm training for. Like the finish line is not just worlds. The finish line is like a year from now, which means it's in like four meets from now and like three weight cuts from now, which is exhausting. And I feel like um, that's something that I've had to kind of figure out and how to use different tools and strategies to help that not weigh on me so much. This is super hard. Like, I knew it would be hard. I'm not dumb. Like, I understand how going to the Olympics is not an easy thing to do. But that I thought that break between Cuba and Worlds would feel longer, because on a calendar it was longer than from Pan Ams to Cuba. It did not feel longer. Um, and I've trained really well, like, so much better than before Cuba. But for some reason, I'm just like, we leave next week, I'm not ready, you know? All of a sudden I'm telling myself I'm not ready and I'm sure I'm sure I'm ready, you know, like 
I can't do much more. Like, I've PR'd a bunch of my training lifts. Some of my training lifts I haven't PR'd in over two years. So, like, to do that now, I'm like, okay, I'm ready. And I usually compete well. Like, I, I just need to worry about those things and not worry about how I feel, like, scared a little bit. Leading up to Cuba, my training was god-awful. I was all over the place, I was not focused. I was just having like bad day after bad day. Um, and pretty much every day we went into training, I was like, well, I'm just trying and make the bare minimum and, and hope for the best. And I think we were gonna use Cuba as like a reset button, regardless of if I competed, if I withdrew, whatever. Um, and I came home and really tried to get my shit together. Not that I like wasn't actively trying before, I was just doing a poor job of it. I think that like little switch of like thinking of it as a reset helped and my training has been really good. And I never say that. You've known me for so long and I never say my training is going really good, but it has been. I, I've like, I feel the strongest I've ever felt. I am hurting a lot less physically, like my joints feel good, no injuries knock on wood. So it's it's going suspiciously good. Why do you say suspiciously? Because I'm always suspicious. If it's going great, I'm suspicious. If I'm not dying, like it's weird. It's not a it's not a normal time. In this quad though, what is normal is speed and how every improvement needs to be made under the immense pressure of evaporating time. And the relentless clock continues to tick towards 